All right. I'll call the meeting to order at I say 5:30, but our clock says 5:33. Uh, <laughs> uh, uh, any adjustments to the agenda? No. Do I have an agenda? No. Uh, uh, so we will table the approval of minutes until our next meeting. Public comment on items not on the agenda. I'm guessing everybody in uniform anyway is here for the public safety discussion. Ruby, you got anything else? I don't know if I'm um, You are. Comment. No, you're okay. not. You're an item. I'm an item. You're an item. <laughs> yes, the very first oh, item. Ah, uh, yes, okay, uh, yes, I recognize that one. Yeah. Um, okay, so moving right along, select board items for discussion and or action. So the first one, is a uh, discussion of the Halloween parade. Right. So it, it's less of a, how, a parade and more just Halloween celebration. Yeah. So um, re quick recap, two years ago, I came to you on behalf of a little group of parents. Yeah. And you kind of came back, it's talking about closing Kimball Hill, um, part of it for part of the night. And you kind of came back with, it's not enough time it was a little do late, some so, work yeah, so, you know and yeah. what we did that year was we did a candy drive and kind of got the word out that halloween was a thing in putney yeah and then last year we did the same thing candy drive and flyers and stuff like that but we also did a warming station in next stage and coordinated promotions between the warming station and Next stage, the warming station in oh, Putney, Putney Cares, Central, Putney Cares. And, we also, and also helped promote the, um, the Halloween thing up at Pierce's Hall. So we did kind of a thing. And I think that, <clears throat> coupled with it was a beautiful night <laughs> on Halloween, it was a really successful Halloween. And the other thing that happened was we didn't coordinate it with them in advance, but the fire station, who, the fire department, who normally parks up in front of the old fire station to slow down traffic on Route 5, parked in front of Next Stage. So it slowed down traffic coming down Kimball Hill, which was really very much appreciated by the parents. That as was- As well as on Route 5 or not? I no, think it was just-, just on, yeah, uh, Well, with the only exception of right here at the intersection of Kimball Hill. Right. So, um, so that was, to us, that was like a huge success in terms of fun for the families, fun for the kids, safe spots, and it still is stressful because there are people who are not slowing down as much as they should, and there are people crossing the road it, that, it's just, is, it's, it's stressful. So now that we had that successful experience i approached tom and said hey you know what about closing part of the road and he's really the linchpin of we have to get these guys on board in order to make it happen at all and i think that tom was really supportive of the idea closing it for a few hours making it so that that space they don't you don't have to worry as much about kiddos running back and forth yeah um and I think uh, my sense is that there could potentially be things like signage and we'd have to have people and all the logistics we could work out with, with Tom. And if we need volunteers, we'll get volunteers. If there's a list of volunteers, we'd, you know, all those things we'd figure out. But we need you guys to consider whether or not you're, we're at a point and this is the right timing to start this. And, and I think that if, as long as this begins to be, if this is successful, I think we're thinking that this would be a tradition as long as we have some group of parents that's willing to do the legwork as we are in terms of promotions and making sure that the things that Tom asks for, which is basically tell people where to go and when and try to get people away from the other side of the road and, you know, to be cooperating. Um, so anyway, so that's basically the pitch. There's still, I mean, I'm still the only parent here because parents are parents and they have things to do. But um, there are still a, a pretty sizable group of parents. Some of them are homeschoolers, some of them are, you know, central school and some are grammar school families who are, are definitely interested in this. And, and we, def we got a lot of support of the warming station this past year. So, well, yeah. I mean, it's, Fortunate coincidence, or maybe I, not coincidence, that no, <laughs> every, everybody who might Josh. have an opinion <laughs> <laughs> would, would, would have an opinion. Right, yeah. um, 
any of you want to weigh in? I, I think it's actually a very wise thing. Um, that's not going to take a whole lot of legwork to get done. Um, and not, you'd send people, sorry to interrupt, mm -hmm. you'd send people on Signal Pine, not on Sand Hill? We'd have to work that out with Brian yeah. to yeah. see what what's going to be the best. Um, and you know, obviously, depending upon what what goes on between now and then. Yeah. Um, but I, I think that's easily done, and uh, and then it it certainly will be a lot safer for everybody. Last year was last year was the worst year, and even though we intentionally, collectively, between us and the sheriff's office, put a lot of emphasis on protecting and slowing traffic on Main Street, and right out here, yeah. there were still what half a dozen or eight close calls where people almost got struck um, and it's, it's like this is this is ridiculous the issue becomes it's not lighted i mean you have yeah. five six seven year old kids who just hyped up on candy and happy about candy and everything yeah. like that Very they'll go anywhere yeah. so i think I, I would agree with like tom said you know i mean if we can keep most stuff over to this side of main street mm -hmm. or over towards the kimball hill side of main street and we were talking about that briefly before mm -hmm. yeah Keep things contained to that side, keep it up in there, and block this section off of the road. As you said, it's not going to be hard to do. Not hard to do at all. And, I mean, you know, the reason I asked about Sand Hill versus Signal Pine is just that the logistics of getting people onto five off of Sand Hill. I mean, you know, maybe mm -hmm. we, maybe you consider one way people want, you know, people who are wanting to go out the West West Road who are coming off of five, we try and route them across Sand Hill, but people who are coming off of the West West and want to get on five, we send them on signal. I, you know, I, I mean, this is up to you guys. Obviously, we'll take this through and figure it out. I just think trying to get any number of cars off of Sand Hill onto Route 5 is dangerous and hard to do. Um, so you know it might, it might, uh, it's you know, three maybe, hours. maybe sort of a one-way route through yeah. there might make sense but totally up to totally up to you guys how you would want to manage that i mean i, I i'm i certainly don't have any objection if no you know it's it's really it's really whether you guys feel between your resources and the volunteers that ruby can put together whether you feel confident that you can pull it off the way you need to pull it off and if if the answer is yes then i think it's a great idea you know um, I, we're, we're, you know, the only, the only risk I see in it is that by doing that, Sand Hill being the most prominent example, and, you know, we're sort of accepting liability if something happens. You know, if we reroute traffic and, and somebody gets an accident because we rerouted traffic, then it's our problem, so, um, or potentially our problem, so. Um, yeah, but that's, we, we again, that's probably a problem. And, and uh, whomever we keep. We need to. He needs to from the state, and maybe. Well, actually, wouldn't even. I don't think it would involve the state really because it's our road. But um, for that time frame, we we simply make um, Sand Hill Road one way off of Route right. Five. Period. That's. I, I think it would be worth doing that. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. um, I mean, if people want to turn onto it, going either either north or south. Yeah. I think that's fine. But turning out of it is right. challenging enough. Right as it is, but if we're increasing traffic that way. And I can, you know, once probably in early September can, you know, talk to Tom and see what, try to see how solidified we can get with the plan and we can, you know, do flyers, we can put it in the paper, yeah. we can yeah. we can talk it up and even do a little map that has a flow chart. You know, we can do anything. Part of it is getting communication out and you, you as a select board, and this is one of the things I think you were mindful of last time, you are going to get someone who's annoyed. Yeah, like no matter how yeah. much communication, it doesn't matter, someone's gonna be annoyed, but I think the yeah. cost benefit at this point, and one of the reasons I think it was kind of stressful last year is it was a booming success. I mean, right. so many kids came out, and part of it was the, you know, yeah, yeah, the weather, but part of it was also because once you hear someone say there's a thing, let's go do the thing, you know, and people come do the thing, and that's just going to become more and more. So if we can get ahead of it and try to get the word out, and, and I'm also going to um, 
one of the ways of mobilizing my little team of people is try to find like slap bracelets or some get someone who can help to us to source Mr. Bristol's one of them yeah. slap bracelets like glow in the dark for kids and just yeah. distribute them far and wide you know that's another way of getting getting uh, safety on our kids right yeah because certainly once dusk comes it's just hopeless it's, yeah it's no and I, I mean if you take I think it was three or four years ago on Halloween night we got 11 inches of snow or right. something uh, all you the know mess. huge storm yeah. and I my in-laws live up on the flats in Westminster where they do a thing every yeah. year and yeah, it cut down on the numbers, but there were still a lot of people out wandering. There weren't that many cars because the weather was so bad, but it, you know, just the, the weather alone yeah. was a challenge. Right. So, you know, no, I think it's a great idea. I, I, think, it's, I think it's, I think there's, it's just the timing. Yeah, there's approximately you know, 200 a kids planning issue. from 4 to 7 p.m. It's three hours. Yeah. Uh, you, now, can work. you may have done this already, but <clears throat> the other thing I would think is what, what do residents and businesses think? I mean, I guess now the only mm-hmm. business that's really affected might be the co- uh, the general store because mm-hmm. offerings is, you know. Yeah. But uh, I would. Yeah. I, um, mm-hmm. I can talk to Lisa about mm-hmm. the because it would be essentially close part of her parking. Right. I would very much venture a guess that you know, Basketville would be completely open to park here. You know, I don't think that's a problem, um, particularly because it's going to be mostly later in the day in some ways. But um, I could certainly talk to both of them. And um, I think from the perspective of you guys had wanted us to kind of poll people on the street. And we, for two years, put out flyers that were, you know, stuffed little notes about if you want candy, let us know. And right, right. just trying to get the word Support out that, that this is yeah. like Halloween is here yeah. and we're a group of parents and blah, 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 blah. Yeah. Um, we would do that again and ask people, let contact us if you want candy and we can, and on that one, and this is, a, this has happened, but we have, there's not really a very, we didn't find any good way of polling and getting good information about because anyone who's annoyed, is, they're not going to tell me they're annoyed. Right. They're going to tell you after the fact. That's just the way it's going to be. Yeah, so I, mean, I, 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 don't think, I don't think we heard anything negative after last year that I recall. I mean, yeah. we, didn't, we didn't close it, but mm-hmm. you know, it was obviously a sort of dominant yeah. feature. Year, though, there, were, there were a lot of people along, up and down Kimball Hill asking, why don't we just close this yeah. And, yeah. And, and do it right? Yeah. So yeah. I, 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 don't, I don't think there would be a lot. Yeah. Well, based upon what we what we heard last year from folks, I don't think there would be any pushback. Yeah. Or, yeah. or concern. No, I mean you you know you're likely to get somebody who's trying to turn on to Kimball Hill grumbling. But you know if they if they're coming, if they've already been noticed up by Kimball Hill, if right. they're coming south, right. and or up by Sand Hill if they're coming south, and or if you got somebody out here saying all you have to do is go up to Sand Hill and you're good. Right. I can't imagine people would be too upset right. by that. But. Yeah, and there may be, uh, if we really close from 4 to 7, there are going to be people who want to come home and park. Do you know what I mean? So they'll have to right. deal with that type of thing. Right. And so, you know, making sure that the word is out as clearly as possible in advance so people can plan accor- accordingly. You know, so if they have to park, you know, it at Putney Cares. I don't even know where the end point would be. Park somewhere and then right. come later. Right. Something like that. Yeah. So. Yeah. And the other thing, as far as the general store is concerned, and you know, this would be up to talking to Lisa about, but you know, maybe, and I don't know whether this makes sense or not, but maybe you keep it open up to the, you know, the turn. The exactly. So that that triangle. So you know, you could reroute people around the triangle if you needed to and or if people were going to the general store but you know yeah that, that would be a possibility it might make things sort of more complicated than mm-hmm. it was worth but yeah. but it, I, I mean but we could go through those logistics yeah time. exactly you might yeah. sort of put it on the table as a possibility right. if they're mm-hmm. i mean i don't imagine they're going to object but mm-hmm. i but i know they'd like to I would, yeah. Keep as much business going as they can. So, um, they park in front of the old fire station. Well, probably I was thinking yeah. about that too. You could you could talk to the maybe no, to no, the no, folks who. That. Krabs. Yeah. Is it Nick Krabs? Um, he applied for a yeah. permit. Um, I 
can't remember what his name is, but Karen will have a record mm -hmm. of it, so um, we can find out. Because that would, you know, that seems like a pretty simple place to be able to park, but if, as long as they didn't object, he'd probably yeah. have to ask his tenants. Right, know, he his, does have tenants there, yeah. but it's open on the other side. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. yeah so. Okay. But I, 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 I'm, I agree also that Greg would probably be receptive. I mean, mm -hmm. you know. Plus, there's quite a bit of on-street parking up in front yeah. of Greg's now too, so yeah. that's right. a little bit less yeah. of an issue. But. No, I, I really can't. I think they even close at five at that time of year. Yeah. I mean, it's. It what, they, what? When does it fall? What day of the week does it fall? It's a Wednesday. Wednesday. It is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so middle of the week. It's not yeah. on a select board meeting. Good. So we don't have to have that deal. Because if, I, if I'm coming to a select board meeting, I want to be able to drive right down Kimball Hill. You could dress up as a goblin. <laughs> there you go. Somebody important. <laughs> but anyway, so I mean, I don't, you know, I don't, whatever you need to do to think about it, talk about it, and make decisions, great. But if it's a go, then we would, I would just work with Tom. If you had any other questions, um, or if you want, if you want me to talk to Lisa, and then that's something you want to hear first, I can try to get on it. It probably uh, no, probably no. can do it before the next. No. I recommend you make a motion. To yeah, I'm not, I'm not sure we need one, but um, I well, L Laura, I'm assuming would be on board. I don't know oh, whether yeah, you've talked yeah. to her about it. I think she would. The, I mean, the other question is just, you know, are you comfortable being the go-to guy, Tom, versus putting it on? Ian or Jess or Keith or sure. somebody else. I don't know. Yeah, no, that's fine. I, think I mean, we're, we'll all be working together anyway. Yeah, that's so. what I'm yeah. assuming. Yeah. 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 You know, if you're the point, you've been referring to Tom as the yeah. contact as long as that's good. Okay. That's fine with me, certainly. Yeah, that's a, you made me think of one more thing. They do a lot of people, like from East Putney or whatever, come here. Because um, what I'm thinking of is a lot do and drive, and Greg is still open. At Baskerville, and all these people are parking there. Mm -hmm. Is that going to interfere with him? Well, it would be worth talking. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that we leave it up to you guys to figure out sort of I don't those remember. kind of logistics. I mean, I think that this whole parking lot gets full, and probably people right. are already parking up there. Yeah, right. Um, yeah. And I don't, but I, I, I don't know where they're coming from. But I certainly think that. Um, but it might be a draw, you know, if it's true. Near the streets closed, people are looking for yep. a safe place. Right. Absolutely. Well, Greg, Greg might want to, you know, cordon off a certain area for yeah. parking for customers or something. You know, I mean, but that's, the other that's thing, just the kind of stuff you can talk to. I mean, I can talk, when I talk to Lisa and to Greg, in all of the publicity and promotions we do, we can very heavily talk about, you know, they can be. We, I, they could be sponsors. I mean, ultimately, this is a community organized thing. Right. And in the past, it was the, you know, the, the warming stations, who sponsors those? We promote that. We can talk about, like, this This is made possible by these local organizations. The right. town of Putney, the general store in Baskerville. And, of course, I yeah. mean, we don't, you know, we don't if that's want to make acceptable. this, exactly. We don't want to make right. those assumptions, but right. there's also, you right. know, the library parking space, yeah. Yellow Barn Park, you know, if people have to walk a few Totally. Box to get here. That's what it is. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So. Yeah. Cool. Sounds like a good idea. So. Need a motion. Make a motion that we approve. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, so yeah. these yeah. guys coordinate closure on Kimball Hill. Yeah. <coughs> uh, so moved. I'll just leave it at that. Uh, so it's been, I'll second it. It's been moved and seconded to uh, allow. Ruby and the fire department and the sheriff's department to coordinate to close Kimball Hill from 4 to 7 on uh, Wednesday the 31st for Halloween uh, from Route 5 to Signal Pine Road. And time, what was the time? 4 to 7? 4 to 7, I think. Yeah. Yeah. That's what you were thinking. That's what we were thinking. I mean, we, I think it's a little, we'll work out if there's some difference there, like push late or something. Within the, that range. Right. Yeah. 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 Um, cool. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good. Thank you. Thanks, Thank you, Ruby. Thank you. <laughs> All right. So, public safety discussion. I mean, you know, we're, we didn't have sort of a specific agenda for a public safety discussion. We just felt like it had been a while since we'd had you in. Um, and Tom's in and out semi regularly, but I, I think 
my feeling was, you know, we haven't asked, we haven't charged with the public, the public safety committee with anything recently. And I guess it's basically a question of whether we should be charging them with anything, tasking them with anything. Um, and if so, what you guys might think that's, a, what that might sound like or look like, or whether you're feeling like things are pretty comfortable in public safety right now, do we need to involve public safety, safety committee, committee yeah. or, or not? So you're first on the list, Tom. I don't know whether, I mean, do you have more to that question slash discussion? Or no, Tom's here too for, for, the, um, for Ruby. So, oh, yeah. Okay. So, um, you know, I know we haven't, we didn't sort of warn you guys, and I, I don't think we gave you much warning in advance that this was going to be a discussion, but we also don't have many people here. So I guess it's really just a question for you guys, whether you feel like right now public safety is going reasonably well, do we need to have, is, are there specifics that the, the committee should be looking at that you guys are interested in asking them about or tasking them with? I, I don't think so. I mean, I, I think overall things are going, things are going fine, things are going well. Um, and I, I can't think of anything, I can't think of anything at all where, where we, we would need we'll to, to charge them with it. Yeah. yeah, no, I mean, everything right, right now is just, we're just moving forward. We're maintaining and moving forward and just since it's a discussion about it what's what's your I, I think I have a sense but what's your feeling about how the paying of volunteers for that their time it, yep that that's helped for their for their call time yep that, that's your response that, that's that's helped yeah um it it's it certainly hasn't been the cure yeah um but it's helped yeah and it it for, for for those for those folks that are doing everything, which there are very few of them, but they're there essentially for every single call. Yeah, it's it's making things right for them. Yeah, um, and it's it's helped. Not not as well as I would have hoped, but it's it's helped to 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 get other people there. Yeah, are we out of the water? No, no way, yeah. not not by a long shot. Yeah, um, and we're taking some steps internally to do a lot of different things this fall to try to 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 get to improve our numbers to to get our more people involved. To get your roster up. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Um, and call volume is call volumes up. No, nope, we're up. The, do you have any sort of a projection? Yeah, right now we're as long as as assuming things are going to stay the same pace that we've been going, uh, we should we'll hit right around six hundred. Six hundred ish. Yeah. That's a lot. Small. Right. Well, and then, you know, I mean, how long ago was it that we hit five hundred ish? Yeah. Five five years ago, maybe. Uh, five, five six years ago. Yeah, yeah. somewhere in that range. Yeah. But it's just it's. It's not yeah. getting less, that's for sure. Right. And I mean to go along with that, I know I know people have the the idea that, well, it's the college or it's the interstate. We can prove it out month after month after month. It's it's not it's not one thing. Right. Um, it's it's just everything. Right. And, and and you know, as you certainly experience in this world, all of you guys, you know. One month it'll be the college, the next month it'll be the interstate, the right. month after that it'll right. be the central school, the month after right. that it'll be traffic, you know, who knows? I mean, yeah. it's just totally unpredictable right. in that way. Right. So, I mean, I think that, you know, we've seen steadily that the college always plays a significant role in our call volume, but not, but not, I think, an inordinate number compared to sort of where it was previously, no. five years ago. Right. It's no. not like that's... No changing the no, equation no, a lot at all, so. Um, Is there anything new cropping up that may not have been? Opioid? Opioid? Yeah. Like opioid not a big, not a, not an oh my God in town. Um, it, well, I say that. It's not that we're responding to and, and um, medicating folks and all that. 
of a handful. It happens. It happens. Yes. Um, to to say that it's not here, and anybody think that? Absolutely not the case. Yeah. Um, but it's just we don't. You're not. Emergency sure. services aren't aren't being called. Yeah. <clears throat> Um, one thing I wondered about as far as call volume steadily increasing is, is there, I, I, I think I know the answer, but is there any sense on any of your part that there's an educational component that we're missing out on, i.e., are people calling 911 necessarily? Are you going to, you know, frivolous calls or, or not? I mean, I know, I know you have to triage them all. I understand right, that. Right. I mean, that, that's a little bit of a trick question. But yeah. Uh, in, in that, we don't know that 99.9% .9 of the time until oh, we're yeah. already there, we're right. done and back. Yeah. Um, but ov overall, no. The, I mean, do, do we get the, the nuisance calls? Sure. Of course. Yeah. Um, everybody does. We're always going to. Yeah. Is there an overabundance of them here? No. It's just part of part of the business. Yeah. Yeah. Um, sheriff's department, you feel different than anything Tom is saying as far as as far as either what you're responding to or the number. I mean, I. All right. Do you have, do you do you guys have any sense of how busy you are relative to how you may have been in the past? I mean, I know there's a lot of overlap on some stuff for you guys, but there is, but there isn't a lot on other things. It seems anecdotally, I haven't heard as much about robberies in town as we were whatever that was a year or two years ago. Maybe. So actually, Karen and I kind of discussed that a few minutes ago. A big thing recently has been the uh, the vehicle break-ins uh, oh, happened up in Perkinsville, Ludlow, Chester, that area. I've only heard of one occurrence of it happening down here. Uh -huh. um, and that was one night. The other thing I heard about the other night is uh, the building right up on top of the hill past Baskerville. I can't think of her name now off the top of my head. I need this building. The, yes. the great one. Okay. Yeah, I heard about that one being vandalized. I didn't hear about anything being taken inside or anything like that. Uh, in fact, the state police was the one who handled the call because it was at night. Yeah. Um, other than that, nothing, nothing dramatic. Uh, the burglaries haven't at least none that have been reported to us or and I monitor VSP quite frequently. I haven't seen anything uh, that out of the ordinary lately. Um, obviously, regarding the opioid stuff, obviously anything when we're in town, we're going to be responding with them and whatnot. Um, I think I've been to two overdoses up in town, one which is actually driving up the interstate and got off the interstate, um, but, but nothing more, more than that. Obviously, like Tom said, it is here. Uh, it, it's here, and you know, it's it's everywhere. You know, it's just trying to keep it controlled and keep it to one location. And do you have a sense? I mean, you know, one of the one of the big discussions in our working through contract stuff with the sheriff's department, you know, a couple of years ago was. The relationship between you guys and the state police and how that yep. was working. You want to comment on that? You guys feel like it, you're working well together. I mean, any issues with that that we should be aware of? I think you'd hear more about if there was issues regarding that than than I would. Um, obviously, it, our working relationship with the state police, or at least I can speak for myself as well. Yeah. You know, I mean, that's about as much as I can comment on that. I, yeah. I don't really know what better to clarify. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, I think, again, a few years ago when we were working through this stuff, there was some sense of whether, you know, and I, I don't think we ever had a clear sense of what some of that friction was about, right. but whether everybody was sort of working, you know, I know obviously you all work together to achieve the same goal. Correct. But that that was a little complicated a few years ago. It seems to me like that settled down some. Does that feel right to you? I would say so. I mean, I had an incident the other day that was actually reported to the state police. The guy didn't get the response that he wanted from the state police or from their investigation. 
And, and I told them, well, I'm not going to conduct a secondary investigation on something that they're already oh, investigating. Yeah. I said, I'll follow up on it and I'll check and see, you know, and make sure that the trooper who, have, who was handling it reaches back out to you. But I'm not going to start dipping my hands into something that they're already doing. Yeah. You know, that that's, I think, where a lot of the breakdowns come from. Yeah. Is right there. Yeah. Um, <coughs> as would be the same if they did that to us. Yes. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that the time that you have allotted to be in Putney is sufficient for the work that you do in Putney and or is it too much or too little? I mean, do you, I'm assuming you're busy as much as you want to be, need to be in Putney. Are you, are you swamped? Are you underworked? You know, any comment on that? I'm always overworked. <laughs> um, no, I, I mean, obviously, I, I would always advocate for more time. Uh, you know, I mean, I think I've worked hard towards the community policing type of thing. I've tried getting into the school more, obviously, and everything like that. I think that in, in this day and age with all, such as the school shootings and stuff like that happening, you know, that, that's what we need to do more work towards is the community policing style. And I think with that's more time... Point. Because I don't think the community knows that he does spend time at the school. And do you feel, I, I know that all of you have been involved in ongoing trainings and discussions, right. et cetera, up there. Do you feel like the school, and I, I don't want to point a finger at the school, but do you feel like things are going well up there as far as school security is concerned? Are there, are, yeah, I mean, I, you know, I. I think there could definitely be some modifications. Uh, I think Tom and I talked a, a little bit about that towards the end of the school year. Mm -hmm. um, just obviously we helped run a mock drill up there towards the end where yeah. uh, both Tom was up there, I was up there. Yeah. Some of your guys yeah. were up there. Mm -hmm. uh, the state police, a couple of those guys were up there. Uh, and, and obviously there was kinks. There's kinks that we need to work through um, and we can improve <laughs> it. You know, there's always room for improvement. But overall, I mean, I think they do have a pretty good grasp on things. But once again, you know, there's always room for improvement. Yeah. A big, a big issue with it is money. You know, what I mean, mm -hmm. that's that's a big issue with it because a lot of the modifications that would need to be made for today's day and age just cost so much. A lot of money. You yeah, know, I, they're only budgeted really, for so much money. It's so. real, and it's really not our purview. Yep. I guess, I right. guess, my question mostly would be, is there, and. I, I, I think I hear what you're saying, but you know, is there anything we can do on our end that would support your work up there that would be meaningful, or do you feel like working with the school is working okay for you? I, I, again, maybe maybe the more time question would be, you know, mm -hmm. the, the part of that. I don't, I don't. Obviously, there is only so much time in a week. Um, I, I guess. I'm kind of put on the spot there. I, yeah. I don't really know. Yeah, no, to no, be no. honest, I, I, it's just you know whether you know if anything leaps out to you whether signage is well. I, for example, I'm glad to see that the signage was changed. You know, we implemented that change in the speed limit up yeah. there, which I think is a good thing. That's not really the school, but that kind of thing. I mean, you know, yep. I think the signage is pretty good. I think the radar system works pretty well to slow people down reasonably. I see you up there often enough to definitely have an impact on people's driving, you know, that sort of stuff, whether there's, you know, I don't think the town is dropping the ball on that, you know. I, I would say they're doing a pretty good job on that, you know, I, I was more referring to the fire drills, the, yeah. the, the drills of those sorts of things, uh, the after shooter drills, yeah. stuff like that. that, that's more what I was looking for, it's definitely the, the speed limit reduction in that area is a good thing, bringing yeah. people in. Um, hasn't been many issues with speed through there. On the weekends, I can't say I can't say that you know people don't use it as like a racetrack through there because yeah. they definitely do. They know the kids aren't there. They know the kids aren't there and yeah. they don't care. You know, yeah. I mean, it's right through. Yeah. Um, but during the weekdays, especially during you know drop off, pick up times, lunch time, stuff like that, there's not a ton of speed through there. There's not a ton. That is, the, do you get the occasional one? Yeah, but yeah. Um, we have had. Some people, Karen has said that there are some people who have said they feel there's too much of a sheriff's presence 
on particularly, I think, on Route Five, isn't it? Um, yes. I, I, you know, I have mostly been of the mindset that, for me, it's kind of an oxymoron to say too much sheriff's presence. Um, I, you know, it, uh, my sense is, and I know there was an example a couple years ago or a year ago when somebody came in and they were upset because they'd gotten two speeding tickets, you know, one sort of right after the other, and it's like. Sorry, I have a hard time feeling bad for you for that. I mean, if it were me, I'd be bummed too. But you know, that's not because you're out tracking them. I, I guess the, the the question related to that would be, you know, do you feel like um, you have not enough to do with community policing, and therefore are spending a lot of time sort of sitting and waiting for people? And I, you know, I'm, I'm not trying to put you on the spot, but just. You know, is your time being, are you able to distribute your time well between speeding and traffic control and community stuff that needs to be done? So, so I can say, you know, obviously I carry a computer around in my car. A lot of the times I'll just pull over to the side of the road because it's yeah. the easiest place. Yeah. You know, I mean, up until a couple of weeks ago, the air conditioning in the fire department wasn't working so well and it was about 95 degrees in there and I spent a little more time in my car with the air conditioning crank with it being about this uh, degree so um, so he can hook up to Wi-Fi in his car right mm -hmm. and that's why you spend time doing that yes. yeah no I mean that, that seems obvious to me that right. you would be doing I mean you know often when I pass any one of the sheriff's or state police cars they're you know clearly on right. the processing right. something, yeah. so that doesn't surprise me. So he's got a hot spot, and he's doing there his, you go. And yeah. sitting, you know, visible. I was just going to say, from my observations, I mean, I think word is out, so to speak, because, I mean, I used to, for some reason, I slowed myself down, too. But, uh, <laughs> Not because of an increase, but the police presence. You know. <laughs> but, um, you know, people, I would slow down, people would ride your tail all the yep, time. Yep. But I think words out and yep. it seems to me everyone's going slow. Yep. You know, so and uh, Jess, Jess it. can explain how many service officers we have in town, whether it's state police and our sheriffs that live right in Putney. Yeah. So go ahead Jess. Yeah, so the, the letter to the uh, the letter to the editor that went public like obviously we saw it. Um, there's a couple points we want to touch base on as the sheriff's office in general. One is that to keep in mind that multiple sheriff's uh, deputies live in town. And so we are driving through town regularly to go to work, to get home from work. And as um, you know, Karen said, it's so easy to take a phone call or do something quick on our computer. And because we have mobile hotspots in our cars, it's conducive to just pull over and do what we gotta do, whether it's um, return a phone call or type a quick email, whatever it is that we have to do mobily because we don't have offices. And so we'll just pull over. I mean, we don't. We have an office, but it's you know, no man's land new thing. Yeah. <laughs> so we'll just pull over, do what we got to do, and get back on the road. And to some people that are traveling through, maybe regularly, or someone who works in the village right here, may think there's an influx because they're seeing the cars. When, when really, I we haven't really been you know scheduling. I do all the scheduling. There's not two people on the schedule at the same time typically. It happens once in a while that one guy is you know flopping over the other guy for a couple hours and you know it's typically Ian in town. Um, the other thing in the edit letter to the editor we wanted to point out is that we do not own a Chevy Camaro. Um, that was brought up nor is it really a sports car. We we did recently purchase an unmarked white Dodge Charger uh, where we'll drive I don't know what else other logistics it has and it's um, primarily going to be used for and has been used for transport mainly highway long mileage transports as it's got unmarked so it can leave state without more of a, an a appearance problem and um, no light bar for you know gas mileage purposes. So that was what that car was purchased for, but he lives in town. He's one of the deputies, Dana, he lives in town, so the car does come through here and he does have blue lights as equipped because it is a police package vehicle, does have blue lights and is He's a law enforcement officer, so he can stop cars, but it's not a Camaro, and that's not its main purpose. It's for transport. It was purchased as a transport vehicle. And I, 
I didn't actually see the letter, letter to the editor. I'm I embarrassed. So, find it and then well, it what was the name? It was complaining too much of a police presence. Yeah, it was labeled like a um, county police town or something of that sort. Um, just labeling as there being a, a influx in police and that we bought a sports car and we do speed traps and that kind of thing. Um, there are there's no speed trapping. The speed we don't go change speed limit signs. <laughs> They are what they are. Uh, they're there all the time. So there's nothing we do to trap people into speeding. Um, so I don't really know how to address that besides saying we sit where there's been complaints. If people are complaining because they live on West West that people are going 45 in the 30, then right. we're going to sit on West West, yeah. hopefully more than a couple times a day, be seen and slow the cars down there. We're also going to do it more often now because kids will be going back to school. So you probably will start seeing more cars, cruisers, if I drive home, I live up that way, and I'll stop and just sit for a few minutes because I have to walk that street <laughs> and, and I can afford, you know, do the police presence there. So we're just doing what we can because we live in the community. We also want to keep, you know, speeders down in the community safe. And as a community member and a parent, my kids go to the school, you know, it's, I feel it's due diligence to, to spend a little bit of time, free time, I don't feel, you know, in the town um, just to help with traffic. But I, I pulled some stats. Just to look really quickly for the fiscal year of 2017, um, not 2018 as it's so fresh, but there were not a huge amount of um, tickets given. As many tickets as there were, there were just as many warnings. Um, you know, the numbers were 50 or no, it was 326 tickets written, and that's anything from um, there's 130 speed for over 10 miles or one to 10 miles an hour and 85 tickets for 11 to 20 miles an hour over the speed limit, and seven tickets issued for 21 to 30 miles an hour over the speed limit. We can't make that stuff up. Like, it's, the tickets are getting written because they deserve to be written. There also was a number of, um, of warnings given, you know, 50-something warnings given for speed also. So is money, there's a lot, those are not the only tickets there, to right. the equipment, and, running stop signs and that kind of stuff. Um, operating without insurance, operating without a license was the second highest. Um, was vehicle not inspected or operating without liability insurance, which comes with another, they had to get stopped for some other reason. But 326 um, tickets to 304 warnings. So it's not that there's like 700 tickets written and, and 100 warnings being given. He's, and other deputies are, are warning people Trying to, to do fair. this, yeah. you know, let's not, Right, every single violation, but you know, if somebody's got, you know, just over a clean record, it's, it's the deputy's discretion to give a warning or a ticket, but we're doing 30 over, uh, probably are gonna get the ticket. Yeah. Yeah. So we just wanted to bring those few points to light about the, the inf there's not some crazy amount of tickets being written, um, anything 650 stops in 300, you know, over 300 days in a year that it's not even a ticket, a, two tickets a day. Yeah. It's less than that, so. Um, I know somebody raised the topic of whether there was, and I, I know this would not be intentional in any way if it were the case, but that there's some level of intimidation for some time when cars are parked near a business that people might not pull into that business. I'm assuming if you guys park in somebody's place of business, like I've noticed there's semi-regularly somebody up at McClyman's, um, you know, which I think is a great spot for a car, you know, watching cars coming down on there five through there. There should have been permission given back. That's what, that's what I'm, I'm assuming thing, that's the case. The same right? thing for driveways. We've gotten numerous pe people from this town and other towns call and say, hey, I live at this address. And if you want There's more. people speeding here all the time. I'd really love if and you could utilize my driveway. You can sit right here and run okay, radar. Good. That's sort of what and I assume. you wouldn't park in a driveway or a business otherwise. And if we're on the street, it's because it's public parking and we can be. Yeah, that's, that's what <laughs> I But I you can be too. Yeah, so. yeah. yeah. good. Anything else? Karen, anything? No, thank you very much, Jim. Yeah. Uh -huh. It was very informative. Yeah. Um, and do you, I know Melissa did, do you use an office in the fire station or not really? I don't generally. I, I generally keep everything in my car. Obviously, I'll use the, the computers and stuff like that, the printer and whatnot. But yeah. 
And when there's air conditioning, I'll use the air conditioning. Yeah. <laughs> um, Which is up and working again. That is. Yep. As a, yeah. As a deal. It's good. It, nice it, what, one thing I was I was pleasantly surprised at when when the 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 guys got the project finished, they really didn't have a have a, an idea on how much actual energy consumption energy we'd be using. Um, so they were when they when they got everything done. We actually put everything on high and just let it go, and they did their their testing of the of the circuits, and we're drawing less power with all the heads act fully active than we were with that one wall air conditioner that we had there. So, and, and they were surprised at that, and I was certainly surprised at that. So that's good. That's good. Nice. All right. All I got. Thank Thanks. you. Thanks very much. Yeah. yeah. And if there's anything that ever comes up that we can be helpful for you guys with, let us know. Thank you. And as far as the um, the Halloween issue is concerned, again, also, right. you know, just let us know if there's any way you want us to participate. Cool. Thank you. All right. Have a good night. See ya. You too. Bye. All right. So, Public Safety Committee. Which is you, Steve. For tonight. You're the chair. Nobody else is here. We haven't met. So, uh, for Do quite some time. Do they need you at this I, point? There doesn't seem to be anything that's pressing. No. Um, you know, as Tom was saying, and, and the Sheriff's Department, I mean, um, I mean, I had, we haven't gotten any complaints about anything other than no written complaints right. except for the article in the paper I mean, I mean the only thing we I ever didn't see it I'll have no, to try I either yeah I, I, yeah, was I, it the reformer or the comments do you know I thought it was in the editorial of the reformer, reformer. No. yes no. I'll have to I, I didn't see it either no. um, <clears throat> but um, I mean the things we discussed in the past were police fire and rescue and rescue that was Time, that was more of a financial thing. Yeah. yeah it's more of um, contracts. Right. Yeah. yeah but, sure. Um, should have asked how that relationship has gone. And yeah. Like that. But I, I haven't heard complaints about it, so I'm assuming. No. So right. Nor have I. No. So. Um, well. And we should get um, Norm Bartlett in at some point. He's our representative to rescue, mm -hmm. so at some point we could invite him to. That doesn't have to be soon. Yeah, we tried to get him tonight. And he didn't work. Yeah. I'm not sure if Deb was able to reach him. He's they, yeah, they might they, they might be out of town. Yeah. yeah. Sure. Um, been working on it for two weeks. So. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Unless he goes away for the summer. <laughs> I don't think so. I think they're around some other time. It's okay. Yeah. No, that's fine. No, just sometime. Right. He, it, it's just that he. You know, it's also good for him to mm -hmm. sort of bounce questions off and things like yeah, that. Yeah, no, I so think this is great. It's useful. Mm -hmm. um, all right, well, I guess that's it for uh, public safety then for the moment. The one other thing that's going to come up in public safety is it's not that long before we negotiate with the schools again. So, correct. Um, so, we should be thinking about that. Uh, mm -hmm. and you know, however we want to, we should probably just. We need to discuss it prior to budgeting. I was going to say, we should probably sometime in the mm -hmm. next couple of months just look at those numbers. Yes. And when do, when, do you know when, when that actually occurs next? Is that in next year's budget? I think it probably is. Yes. So sometime before next year's budget is mm -hmm. created, we should be in the private school that you're referring to. Yes. Yes. Right. Yeah, right. yes. And their contributions. The contributions, right. exactly. So um, you know, that's something we can review and Yeah, we definitely just, need to start that process. Yeah, because it it takes a little doing. Mm -hmm. I mean you know, they're all always very receptive to the right. process, but it but it but we want to do it in a timely fashion so we're not right. Saying it like last minute, no, we, we need to get this done. Yeah, I don't so. want to do it last minute. No. So. All right. Good. Uh,
I, the, I guess this might sort of, this might fall under public safety in a way, animal control. I mean, it's not, we don't have it on our list, so I don't, but somebody had brought to my attention that there was a dog on dog attack down here 10 days or so ago. Hunting landing. And one of the dogs was killed, is that right? Yes, but we have to remember that is private property. Right, that's what Windham somebody Winter pointed housing. out. Yeah. They are handling the situation. They are managing that. Yes. Okay. Um, our anim animal advisory board does know about it. Yeah. Um, Janet Goldstein has met with Wyndham Windsor Housing, and I kind of have to reel them back in and remind them that they're tasked to revise the ordinance yeah. only. For the, for the moment. Yeah. Yes. And, and come up with a job description as well, right? Um, yeah, for the, mm -hmm. for the animal control, control officer. We do have a candidate. Um, yes. He was interviewed by the Animal Advisory Board, but they did not make a decision. Okay. Um, so he is um, military. This is the same man that came a couple years ago, Steve, that then was deployed. Right. Yeah. yeah. Tom. Tom Caffrey. Tom Caffrey. That's um, right. I met him, mm -hmm. and uh, he's got a strong background in uh, yeah. law enforcement. And um, like I said, he's active military, mm -hmm. so he's not in town all the time. A hundred percent. Yeah. So we have to discuss that a little further. Okay. And see what what the, the options are. Yeah. Needs are mm -hmm. whether we have part time, full time. It is on call. Right. So, and it is stipend. Yeah. But he is very interested. <coughs> also, and I'm going to throw this out on the table. He is also, also interested in constable, right? Right. Yeah. And I don't know the history of a constable being in Putney. Um, so I don't know if that's a consideration. We we have had a constable, not always, but mm -hmm. but much of the time they don't play a huge role. Um, serving people is one of them right. um, as a court function. I mean, these the, you know the right. sheriff's department can certainly do that, but it's a function that for yeah. whatever reason, if it needs to be done, um, you know. Uh, it hasn't been a particularly active position for the last number of years, yeah. mm -hmm. um, but it's. But you know, we also in the in the discussion of public safety and particularly in community policing, we did discuss whether a constable could play some meaningful role in that um, and and what that might be. Um, so. Yeah, I think it's yeah, well, I was, discussion. Yeah, if, you, if there's a constable, do you need full-time sheriff's department? You know, that's something we have to, like, think all the way through. Yeah. Um, I think also, though, we thought of a constable um, maybe more as a liaison between different organizations, the school, or whatever, and yeah. because they could spend more time. Correct. You know. Yes, and, uh, yeah. But uh, I think that part of the issue is that they wouldn't be, they wouldn't have the same classification as a constable right. as sheriffs. Yeah. 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 And, and the train. So but I don't think the town right. would want that. No, well, it, you know, it was a possible discussion that that would be an option as far as policing is concerned. But um, you would have to have somebody that was very committed and mm -hmm. very well trained mm -hmm. and accountable right. um, and yes. and you know mm -hmm. that those don't always all come in one package so um, sort of where you where you go with that and I really don't I don't see Putney having its own police force well that you, you know that. that that was that was a, we we explored that option you did Janet Goldstein actually was instrumental in exploring that so okay. you could chat with her about that sometime okay um, the infrastructure was the biggest. Exactly. Piece. The, mm -hmm. the cost of the infrastructure. Right. To Cars, training, an office, you know, all yeah. sorts of things. Just um, yeah. 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 It's, it's an expensive that's, that's prospect. That's great. You already looked at that. Yeah. 
Now that was know. two or three years ago. Yeah. yeah. She went and met with different people doing and and researched. There's a there's a report on it, so okay. um, you might be interested in that. But um, but yeah, one of, one of the things she looked into was, you know, there are a handful of towns that use a constable as their primary source of law enforcement, but it's a very different model than what right. we've used our constable for. So mm -hmm. you know, I think serving. Serving subpoenas has been the primary thing that a constable has done in my memory, anyway. So, yeah, um, yeah. I, don't, I don't know much. No, no, about it, that. I don't think there has been one since. Well, Henry may oh, well Henry have was, still been he, when you for the first he, year or two when he you came on. Yeah, yeah. yeah, that's right. Um, and was Henry constable and? He was animal control officer. I can't yeah. remember exactly what the overlap between those two mm -hmm. was to right. work for him, but. Yeah, because um, I was thinking the same, you I, know, he could overlap. You could, see, uh, again, constable. if you had the yeah. right, if you had right. just the right person, right. that mm -hmm. yep. could work great. I mean, yeah. Tom, that, you know, that's what he's proposed, Tom right. mm -hmm. Catfrey. Yeah. Um, you know, not not that he's proposing that there would be overlap, but that that's a position that one right. person could fill both yeah. slots. So. So yeah, the board is discussing his qualifications and resume. Sounds good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. good. Okay, so next is flood and anything else? No. Good. No, um, flood and fluvial erosion hazard regulations public hearing. Mm -hmm. So we aren't technically having a public hearing on that tonight. We're talking Not about tonight. having. We right, have to warn, warn it. So, public hearing. so basically the idea is to figure out when we want to learn that. Do we have a time limit on when we need to have that done by? No, because we have to notify the towns. Um, so there's some minor changes presented to the planning commission. They're just minor like edits. And these are available here. Yep. Yes. And those mm -hmm. that's your copy. And we already had that. We that, had, I can't remember, was that technically a public hearing or that was an information session? No, I can't that, remember. that was the public hearing that needed to be worn by, by the planning, planning commission. commission. And now that they're... Was that planning commission or DRB or both? No, that was planning, planning commission. commission. Right, yeah. um, so the select board has to warn their public hearing as part of the process. And... Um, Alyssa Sabeto from Minden Regional will be at the meeting. Okay. So if there's anyone that has any questions, um, I would expect the Planning Commission to be there as well. Um, you were both at the first yeah. hearing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you kind of know what kind of crowd we're going to anticipate. And I didn't get many phone calls. Or questions after that no after that public hearing yeah um, I did go up to one property on East Putney Falls Road mm -hmm. and um, I met with John Campbell mm -hmm. broker the um, state yeah and our guy yeah and we walked the property and um, on the map it shows its flood hazard area but because it was built up on rocks yeah and the brook kind of you know went down in between so there's a, there was no a big way elevation yeah, yeah there's no way it would flood right mm -hmm. which is exactly what a big point of what they were trying to say at Correct. that meeting is that every Correct. i think um property owners fears are um if they are in flood hazard areas they're not going to be able to develop their property right. but that's not the case so each property is going to be different. Or, or it, may, it may not be the case. Right. I mean, sometimes it is going to be the case. Well, but sometimes. Yeah. But so if it is, then you may have some restrictions. Right. Or limitations. Yep. But the state's really not. It's just a second review by the state. Right. To make sure if you're near that area, you're built up so many feet. Mm -hmm. And um, your property is protected. That's yeah. what they're trying to do. And 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 also properties downstream. Downstream, right? right. right. Yeah, are right. protected. Yeah. And and infrastructure downstream is protected. Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. So there are some natural um, channels mm -hmm. for brooks and streams. 
Which are good. Just what they are. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's what that whole discussion yeah. about 60 feet from the Correct. center line yeah. yeah. was all about. So, um, so we do need to mourn a public hearing. Mm -hmm. uh, my suggestion would be. On Wednesday? Yeah. yeah. Before a select board. Yeah. I um, agree. And I think probably not at our next meeting because August. And no, we have to have Labor time Day to put for, it in the right, paper. For what, 15 days, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then, um, you know, if anybody, we want to get the information back out to people. And I'm thinking. September 12th or 26th. Oh, let's see. So the 29th mm -hmm. we meet. And then you have the 12th. Oh, and then the 26th. I think either one of those would be fine. How about I mean, the I think that's I think that's a good time of year. Yeah. People are back in town. Yeah, 26 is good. People 26. have settled back yeah. in, et cetera. And then we I can notify um, surrounding towns because we have to certify everything. And so I'm going to put September. 26. And maybe just before you get too far on planning that, just make sure that PIP is. Yep. Or, or, or somebody to represent the planning commission. Yeah, and Alyssa. And I know Alyssa's on vacation, but I thought it was like the week of the 17th. So we should be safe. Okay? Okay. Sounds good. All right, financial reports. I don't know what you guys have, but I had quite a few reports, and um, I guess what I want to point out, um, there's a balance sheet, and then there's budget status report. Um, so the balance sheet for this year, you have two different. I have the, this is the general fund budget status. That's report. the one I'm looking at. Okay. Oh, okay. So and the balance sheet is on a, on this guy. Separate. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so general fund balance sheet. In the checking account right now, we have two million sixty-three thousand one hundred and seven dollars and five cents. Um, so tax money is coming in. Taxes are due this Friday for Friday. Um, the hours that they can bring in? Yes, um, nine to four. Nine to four. Yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. Every day this week. Yes. yes. Yeah. Uh, after four on Friday, it's late. Um, yes. Right. Uh, yes. So, yeah, it's in the mailbox on Monday. And unfortunately, it's, you know, but, um, it has been coming in. It's um, steady. Mm -hmm. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So we've been uh, making you know deposits every day. How's it worked with some of those people who haven't gotten their state? Um, actually. There's a few people still out there um, that dealt with a person today. Oh, well, actually, I, I, you know, I think the media is really underplaying how many people have not heard anything. You know, waiting to hear. Yeah. You know, just a small amount of people that I've talked to. Yeah. Um, but people are patient. They're understanding, and um, we're working with them. So after Friday. We'll see. We'll probably see the numbers. Right. But um, we haven't seen any downloads from the state in a week. Yeah. Uh, you know, we were expecting some people to get state payments, and we haven't seen them yet. But um, what we're telling people, too, is, uh, you know, if you can pay the whole thing now, your state payment will go towards your second payment. If you can't, right. you know, then we look and see if they yeah. Had last year, mm -hmm. we approximate. Mm -hmm. but, um, no, overall, everybody's been um, very understanding. So, on 
here on our budget status report, like on just on the first line item, property taxes, 945, 330, that's what we would anticipate having collected at this. For this year. For, for at this point in time for this year. No. No, so the budget right there, that 945,330. Yeah. yeah. So that's general fund, Josh, okay? Yeah. So on the highway. Oh, okay, Hi separated highway. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. that makes sense. Yeah, I was, highway that's was 836,000 or okay. something, okay? Yeah, yeah, no, that makes sense. And just remember that, you know, we have to pay out the school too. Right. Mm -hmm. So. Um, no, and that's where, okay, so right. the, the, basically the different, I mean, we've got the highway. At 836, the general fund at 945, and then our total receivables are 3,457. So that includes the education tax as well. Right. So that's the total that we will bring in during all three tax periods, all right. three tax payment times. Right. And then it gets the school portion goes out to the school, the yes. highway portion, right? Yes. Okay. Yep. I just wanted to make sure I was yep. knowing exactly what we were looking at. I know there's a lot of numbers here, and it's. <laughs> but I'm still getting my head around this, too. I spent a few days with Chip, and um, the first day I was just like, all right, you gotta go now. <laughs> too much. <laughs> it was like my head was like, woo. But. I'm seeing things and you know making the connections, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so it's it's been a really good training. Good. Yeah. No preparation for budget season because it's <laughs> coming right along. Yeah. Yeah. Town meeting is one that's not you know. Really punctuate whether you've learned what you need right. to learn. Right. <laughs> Try to explain it. To yeah. Everyone, right? Exactly. <laughs> yes, because you can rest assured that when those tough questions come up, mm -hmm. you'll see three heads going like this. I'll be going like this. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. All right. So, yeah, I printed these off because you haven't seen them in a while. Yeah. Um, we're working on a two-page audit list request for um, John Mudgett. Uh -huh. um, after we get through this week, um, I know Lee has been pulling some of the reports. Um, we'll be able to get John what he needs, and then we can schedule the audit. Okay. So I don't know how soon we can get that done, but hopefully by September. Does he have a timeline for you? Or? No, he's waiting for me okay. and for us. He's waiting mm -hmm. for our office. and. Um, he but said, but you've had good communication with yes. him, and you sort yeah. of feel and like he, you know what he needs. And oh yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. And Chip went over that with me as well. Cool. So, yeah, so it's just a lot of it's um, yeah. reports that Liam's used to. Uh -huh. uh, like I said, the last two weeks have been hectic with taxes. Yeah. So there hasn't been much time to do other right. projects. Anything that surprises you here that you want to make us aware of, or I, no, I mean, it looks it looks like things are making sense. No, it looks good, and I go online and check the banking too, and um, we're in good shape right now. So, but it's the beginning of the you know, fiscal year. Right. Um, I will add that um, on page two of the balance sheet. Um, so the delinquent tax clearing and the utility payment clearing and the current tax clearing. So at the end of the day, those numbers should always be zero. Because that means Sorry, where are you? On page two of the general fund balance sheet. Balance sheet. Oh balance sheet, okay. Yes, because yes. And it's been a struggle. When you see to money get it to zero out. Yeah, when you see money sitting in there, it's like, oh, what's hung up? You know, what's going on? And it's yeah. um it's not always me. Uh, I press the button and it doesn't go anywhere. Just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I swear I press the button. I swear I do. It doesn't go anywhere. Well it's kinda of funny because I was pulling everything through on a date. <laughs> driven by a date. Well that kind of messes up 
them doing their deposits no. now because they can't reconcile. Because that's not right. based on a date. No, yeah. it's based on deposit actual number. numbers. Yeah. yeah. So I told them I wouldn't do that anymore. But um, no, we're gaining. It's a learning curve, and um, yeah, we're getting there. So, on a lot of these line items, for example, on page, this shows one of 12 of, which one of 12? Is that the budget percent? status oh, report? Oh, one of six of the budget status report. Mm -hmm. It's actually like the fifth page in. Budget shows zero for a lot of these. Um. And then actuals are real numbers. If you go to the... It's actually it the fourth physical page. Yeah, yeah, I'm just wanting to understand why that is. Um, Keep going. One more. Right, which one are you? There you go, right there. Oh. See, your budget shows. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, is that just an accounting discrepancy for the moment? Because it's showing. I don't know what that is, Josh. Okay. You know, so I wonder if that's just small. an old report. You know why? It might be that's not zeroed out or something. Is no oh, because this is the same thing that we have starting on right. page one. Okay, so, so it yeah, must is, be, yeah. yeah okay. This is like the no good. Just number. ran over and yeah. one. Okay, yeah. that makes sense because I was like, I don't know how many zeros for what we budgeted because that doesn't make sense. All right. So it's just a repeat, but right. it's not showing it as budgeted. All right. Excuse me. Yeah, you can review those and then yeah. I'll get more proficient in them. Okay. Town manager's report. Uh -huh. I can find that. I just had it. One. All right, so we're going over the um, public hearing. Um, Holland Hill, we're going to get ready to um, put that out to bid. Okay. I was hoping to get it done this week. Um, to get it out to bid. Yeah. Um, Brian's planning on trying to have a pre bid meeting on, where are we? Probably the 27th. Okay. Or before. It might be the following, the previous week, the week of the 20th. We meet on the 29th, right. so it'd be nice to have bids back by the 29th so we can open them up and uh, see what they are. Yeah, because that gives September. Brian said it's a two-week project. Yeah, and the culvert is sitting and ready to go. Where is that down at Renault? At Renault's, yeah. yeah. So and yeah. They, they'll just sit on that till we need it. Right. Okay. But we definitely got to get it out to bid. Okay. So we can get it in and out of the stream before the deadline. I think it's November 1st. It's okay. got to be completed. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And the grant award is um, through December 2018. But again, you have to be out of the stream. Completed. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah. Okay. Did the detour, that got all figured out? Yes. I there was oh. an issue with that. So. We did get the, um, the temporary easement from Mrs. Um, Scheidler. Mm -hmm. So Brian will be able to put the culvert down in there and build a temporary road, one lane. Mm -hmm. And um, we are going to have to cut some trees. But um, we met with Mrs. Scheidler and um, we talked mm -hmm. about the project and what her expectations are. She signed the right away, the temporary easement right then right. and there. Right. So that is set and that saves Brian a lot of work. Yeah and expense yeah no and we yeah. it had been indicated that that was what was going to happen but it mm -hmm. hadn't been able to that happen is done. so good yep that's nice yes so that's a little update on that um tom did get his brand new truck so he's um setting that up now good this is the f-350 yeah. um we had originally purchased a 2018, oh, that's but right. they stopped making them. Yeah. 
So we ended up with the 2018 at the same price. Same cost, good. So, yeah, very good. Uh, yeah, he's very happy with that. It's a nice truck. So it's over in Keene right I'd now. I'd be happy with that too. Yeah. Keen getting detailed or getting? No, um, the cap and all that stuff's uh, so getting yeah. on in there under uh, oil and decoding it yeah. and all that. Sounds good. So it's getting all equipped. And good. And I guess he's getting the step rails too. Getting, sorry, what? Step rails. Uh huh. Because yeah. it is pretty high. But it's a nice looking truck. Good. And it's red. Really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So it fits right in down yeah. there. Yeah. And he's actually doing a lot of work to that truck. Like he's taken out like the console so he can put his radios in there. And he's doing all of the Physically changeover. Physically doing that. Yeah. yeah, what he can handle, he's doing. Yeah, good. So again, that too saves the saves. Yeah. money. Money, yeah. So I think, a lot. yeah. No, he's doing a really good job. Um, Putney Historical Society will meet with select board on August 29th to discuss the upstairs. Okay. Um, I'll have that letter available again to you. Okay. And um, we'll see what they have to say, what their proposal is. Um, the pool side. Happy to say that we have somebody that's tackled it. Put the pool oh. slide. I, I, I got the I got the bottom piece off. Yeah. And I picked up the hardware to put the new bottom piece on. Yeah. I don't think that the the piece that's broken that they the brace that, yeah, yeah totally under engineered. I mean I, I'm not at all surprised that okay. that's broken. I've contacted all the local welders who I know, and none of them have the ability to do because it's aluminum, mm -hmm. none of them have the ability to do aluminum welding at a remote site. I did get the name of somebody up in Bellows Falls who might be able to do it. Um, mm -hmm. But I'm tempted, because the way the measurements work out, a, an 8-inch block under there would accomplish the same thing. I have a bunch of pieces of 8-inch pressure treated sitting around, so um, I'm tempted to just do that. And That's what Joe so. did. I, yeah, yeah. No, but this is much bigger, and, right? Right. Right. You yeah, know, that was sort dirty. of holding the brace right. in place underneath there. But yeah. what's clearly happened over time, as a result of that brace breaking, is that the whole thing has slowly crept downhill. Yeah. So the next challenge is to get a jack under it and slowly, or oh, hopefully okay. quickly, yeah. but maybe yeah. slowly bring it back up to where it was supposed to be. Mm -hmm. Attach the new piece and then put a, you know, essentially replacing the brace with a solid member because the brace yeah. I, just is does not look to me like it was designed to really do the job it's supposed to do so i think we could fix it and have it break again in a year or two and that yeah. really makes sense to me so okay. um well, so thank you for one step at a time yeah. i haven't gotten back over there yet. Right now, but, uh, but at least that piece is off yeah yeah so. okay um, highway, any comment on? I mean, not highway, uh, sidewalk? Uh, any developments on that? Or, I know we have the right of way. We do have the right of way. Yeah. Um, I had to send the attorney our um, certification letter. So they have to sign off on all the easements. So they review the, the plans, yeah. make sure the easements match. match. Okay. The numbers and this and this is Larry's office yes. that does yeah. this. Okay. Um, Eric did it for the phase two, so he has the paperwork. I was hoping I would have had it back by now because I have to get it to the state in order for them to, to, to get take the their approval. next step. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, I do have one development about the sidewalk. So I had mentioned. Um, few weeks back that I was going to apply for a grant mm -hmm. because the cost of these three has increased. Mm -hmm. So right now we have a $300,000 grant and it's a 20% match. Mm -hmm. And I knew because of the extras, RSG going up 22000 right. there's the state cohort 40000 um, the right-of-way easement impact on 
one of the properties. Yeah. It was, you know, 15. Um, so we put in for a grant of 269,500, I think. Um, so among 31 applications, we were awarded and approved for $215,760 in federal funds. Excellent. Congratulations. Wow. That's great. Yeah. Good. That's through what? Bike and pedestrian? pedestrian. Yeah, yep. that's what I thought. Yeah, V-Trans. Excellent. Yeah. Good. So, that, and does that... Does that reflect the total we need minus our 20% match, or that number is just what they awarded and we have to figure out how to Right, work. we'll have to do the 20%. See, see where, yeah. so that is, that is minus 20%. Right. It's the total request minus 20%. Right. Okay, so, great, good. So that was good news. Yeah, definitely, that's excellent. Um, I'm hoping, um, we're still anticipating the project going out to bid in the fall. Yeah. Uh, construction will be, it could be in the spring. Uh, it's going to be tough. We'll see what we Timing. get for bids. Well, and we have to see when it goes to the state and when they get right. back to us, etc. Right. So, yeah. It's yeah. moving forward. Good. Which is a good thing. And are you keeping Landmark apprised of that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, Corey Mack, I met with him. He's with RSG. He yeah. came down um, last week. On Thursday, I met with him. Um, he was taking pictures, you know, because he's trying to match the lights up at Landmark to go along oh, yeah. Benner Lane, so it, you know, is consistent. Good. But um, he's excited, and you, you might want to just experience tells me you might want to weigh in with the energy committee on that question, good point, um, because they had significant commenting, particularly when the park and ride went in, but in general, public lighting is an issue that they okay. like to be aware of. Um, primarily, at least on that one, their main interest was that it was properly downlighted so that it wasn't causing light right, pollution. Right. I'm assuming the state and RSG would be thinking that same way, mm -hmm. but I would recommend yeah. Letting the energy committee okay. at least go look at landmarks. Exactly. Yeah. You know, yeah. just let them weigh in on it right. so that they don't. Yeah, and I so know there, there is a surprise in it. There is a property owner on the other lane too. Is they're worried about you know too much lighting. Yeah. Yeah. You know, so. Yeah. No, and I mean. Corey's it, taking that into consideration. It's so. all about the design, and I you right. know that I know they I know they will be conscientious of that, but. Um, you know, just it's that distribution of light so that it gets wide enough but doesn't right. affect, you know, like a homeowner or yeah, a tenant yeah. or, or a, you know, rental owner on the lane. Exactly. Right. Doesn't want it shining in through yeah. people's windows, etc. Yeah. So, I will do uh, that. Cool. Thank you. All right. Anything else? Good. I'm good. All right, any other business, other business? Not that I'm aware of. Deb, you got anything? No, okay. See you, yep. good. I, yep. All right, um, I think we are gonna have a brief executive session. Um, we can, that's totally up to you, I mean. I, yeah, I'd like to have a brief executive right. session. We'd invite Karen, um, so. If you want to, I, I, I would ask for a motion to have an executive session based on discussion, and I don't have the statute in front I of me. I have it right but, here, but do you want to do warrants first? Oh, first? oh, sorry. Yes. Oh, warrants, sorry. I missed yes, that. let's yeah. do warrants, and then we can. Yeah, yeah. Um, sorry. Yeah. Okay, I'll move to approve and execute the warrants as presented. I'll second that, and uh, if there's no further discussion, all in favor? Aye. Aye. All right. Okay, so payroll warrant dated August 10th in the amount of $11,126.56. Um, so this is just, no, this is a library too. Um, so you'll notice net amount 
Mm -hmm. And then this is electronic, so this is direct deposit. Mm -hmm. Oh, so these people have switched yeah. over. So right there is your total gotcha. combined. Stuff is going. Is that gonna gonna work well as we go Spending forward? My paycheck. There you go. Oh, no, we're, yeah, we're don't spend it all in one place. We, we have little hiccups because there's a lot of steps involved. There is. This is just steps. printing a check. Mm -hmm. yeah, so with oh the e the e's. Yeah. No more takers yet, eh? We have seven. seven. Right. Oh, we do have some. Yeah. Oh, so this is just so that just isn't, isn't reflected on this one because there's only three showing up. Oh, yeah. That's right. You know why? Because the library no, two is separate. Yeah. Well, no, they should be on there, but um, let's see. Oh, it doesn't show. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah okay. It, actually, it just doesn't show up with the. E. I get it. Yeah. Good. 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 I know it's uh, more confusing. You want that? Will it get easier enough, do you think? Where, you know, actually. Yeah. It'd be nice to have everyone. I was just going to say, that's one of the big. Direct deposit. And I, I, direct think, deposit. I think that you. We can. I think people will probably head that way right. over time. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Westminster? Well, no, not everybody's on uh, direct deposit up there. Yeah. So I don't think you can make people. Right. No. 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 But I think also I've worked for organizations where, it was where it's part of, yeah. Mm -hmm. So it would have to be in the personnel policy. Yeah. yeah. Before, yeah. 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 Uh, the people yeah. I mean, I would think as much as anything, it would be you guys sort of saying, this is great. Right. <laughs> you know, I, I, it's yeah. just in my bank account. You know? Yeah. yeah. Seems well, pretty handy. Well, I think some, I mean, if they're made aware, check it with their bank because I think some banks will give you a, a, a little bit of a, a cut you a deal on your yeah. service charges yeah. and stuff like that if you do direct deposit. Yeah, that's true. Oh. Yeah. In fact, some of them will forgive your service charges if you have at least one have electronic. A steady yeah. Yeah. electronic deposit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, payroll warrant dated August 17th. In the amount of $8,000 one hundred six dollars and thirty-three cents. So that's light guards and how late is it being open now? I mean when when will it close? I asked them that question. Um, it's another week, right? Yeah. The thirty yes. Yeah. I know they are saying that the, the problem is um, everyone goes back to sports right. and they lose the She's running out of staff. Yeah, the staff oh. Um, there are two invoices on here. One is for um, Josh King uh, for like twenty thousand. So twenty five Com completion of the fire department project. And there was um, something else he did at the Town Garage, but twenty five thousand for the mini splits that mm -hmm. he just installed and yeah. up and running. So. Um, that one was big, and Putney School District, um, a check for $29,331.88. Um, that is their last payment, 
Okay. That will be paying to them. It was that a, what you mean? Yeah. Or last payment for, for the final for, cash for the final. flow payment. Fiscal for fiscal yes, 18. It was mm -hmm. in 18. Um, for fiscal 17. Yeah, we had um, gotten the information and interpreted it a different way. So we were um, corrected and so we had to issue that check. Okay. But, 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 what, but we knew about that. I mean, we didn't know about it, but we had the money for it. We did have the money, yeah. yep. Yeah, so that's like 29000 the town has less, yeah. unfortunately. But, um, what else? They were probably going to catch up with us at some point. Oh, and, yeah. And there are several um, taxpayers that did get a refund because their state payment paid more than their taxes, so you'll see some names on here. Um, those checks were issued as well. Was that like 1015 Yeah. Like about two weeks ago, I think, as we. Uh, now you have a similar page for this. Yeah. Yeah, Deb and I went through it and. Um, we looked at it and the way we read it, you know, we just thought it was an overpayment and it was coming back to the town, but that was not the case. So. And I think Deb had contacted the state mm -hmm. to verify. Mm -hmm. I did contact the Department of Ed. What I didn't realize is that it wasn't the final, that it was a preliminary and it was a final coming because I had no history. Mm -hmm. I didn't realize yeah. that there was a final final. Because <laughs> <coughs> yeah, we had we had thought we satisfied the school. <coughs> yeah, excuse me. With two other checks, but you know. not quite. <laughs> <laughs> They're hard to satisfy. But Chip went over that with me as well. So and it made sense. That's good. Yeah. No, it actually uh, I you know. I saw all the numbers and I looked at the cash flow, the final cash flow from the state, and it's like, yeah, it all added up. I mean, our NEMREC report showed, you know, what we paid. This is and, what it's yeah, supposed to be. Yeah. yeah. So. This goes back to you know, three weeks ago. Yeah. Yeah. It was Joey that actually. Joey and I did? Yeah. She sent us an email and I'm like, wait a minute. We looked at it and we were like, no, we're right. And it was like, probably more. So it's okay. Everybody's. It, well, it's, yeah. It's, yeah, it's yeah, complicated. It's complicated. Well, it's kind of tough just to send a $29,000 check without verifying, you know. Why? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't send out any yeah. point no checks without knowing why. Yeah. Um, the municipal what was the floor design? What did Lawton stick something at the library? No, it's fire station. Oh, oh that's carpet right. yeah, squares, yeah. yep. Yeah. And that's what Temple wants to do. Uh Temple did a few things. Um mm -hmm. he replaced the pump up to the pool. Oh right, that reminds me that's what I was gonna ask. Yeah. Uh, well that one, but then also the um, Old Depot Road? Yeah, Old Depot Road. They're still um, working on that. Oh. Mm -hmm. So I um, they're testing. 
Okay. So they're watching the gauges and they're they're trying to figure out you know what to do. Right. So um, they haven't gotten back to us. So um, things are still working. Uh, the Putney Inn has had a well, it's Club Vermont. Right. Has had a soft opening. Yeah. Um, he's booking you know engagements down there already. Um, I was informed that the motel, all 26 rooms, are booked solid for like two weeks. So I relayed that message to Chris Hayes with Simons. Mm -hmm. So they knew the that the flow is going to be yeah. increased mm -hmm. and it might impact Old Depot pump station. So they're monitoring that, but uh, nobody's come back with a uh, solution yet. Great. So I wonder if did the problems go? Coincide with when they opened up for lunch? Mm. No. Mm. No. Um, Coincided with when Putney Lane came online. No. Right? no. Previous? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was undersized. The pump was just undersized. Huh. But um, Champlain is a pump company. Mm -hmm. And um, they based the pump size on the engineering specs that were provided. Mm -hmm. So so it's in yeah. theory the engineers issue. Right. But that's a, it's an engineering Wyndham Windsor engineering issue or is it does it predate that even for the engineer? It would be Wyndham they're involved. Right. Yeah. Because they resized it to accommodate that. To, yeah. Okay. That's I what mean, I, that's what I Yeah, thought. they yeah. had to resize it for the apartment right. complex. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And um, at that point, Club Vermont wasn't even, you know, in the works. In the yeah. works. Yeah. We didn't even know they were going to go online. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that too. And it should have already been sized appropriately for that. Anyway, I mean, it's right. really yeah. we already knew about that. Yeah. Right. That it yeah. had the potential of being online at the yeah. time. So. Yeah. Well, that's too bad. Well, all right. Well, now that we've done the warrants, I think there still isn't any other business. Um, so uh, I would so, entertain a motion to enter executive session. All right. I'll move to enter into executive session under Title I VSA 313A2. After making a specific finding that premature general public knowledge would clearly place the public body or a person involved at a substantial disadvantage to discuss negotiating or securing of real estate purchases or lease options. Second. Uh, so it's been moved and seconded to enter executive session and to invite Karen to join us. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye. And we will not be making any no. decision based on this. <laughs>